hats come across as douchey. Granted, they come across as douchey, but we're all supposed to act like this guy isn't a toothless far left activist instigator seemingly in an opium vision quest? I don't understand. <laughs> Leading this show with sports news from the weekend, yes. the Patriots beat the Chiefs. So that one on. <laughs> yeah, <there you> go. <laughs> so this weekend, okay, for those people who were not followed, there was a huge clash between some kids in MAGA hats and a yeah. Native American elder. Yes. Um, let me ask you this question of the day: d d Does finding out what the full story is now, what's transpired, has it changed your opinion? For those of you who haven't been following, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of fill you in in a second. So for those who are following this this weekend, this is most likely all you saw. <laughs> That kid didn't even know he was being filmed. <laughs> no. Now, some of this might seem nonsensical to some people watching, but if you were on Twitter or Instagram, basically everyone covered it this way. A group of kids oh, in MAGA hats surrounded Native American veterans, uh, a veteran specifically, yeah. taunted him with chance of build the wall until he cried. Uh, that's pretty much how it was covered. There was the outrage mob video, on... Right? No, there was the outrage mob on <laughs> a Twitter. A tear like he just saw pollution. Right, yeah. exactly. I saw a MAGA hat by the roadside. Also, my drum's out of beat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> meth will do that. Uh, oh uh, so... Uh, this is a terrible start. Let me, okay, many on Twitter right away, they started with the outrage mob against the kids. Even, here's the thing, many conservatives actually took the side of Nathan Phillips, the yeah. Native American elder, without waiting for the full story. If you notice, one person did not react immediately. Yours truly. Here's why. When I see this sort of thing, <laughs> when I see this kind of a story, I think to myself, eh, sleep on it. Well, you, like every other person out there, should have... You should have learned by now that you can't just judge what the media gives you, right? Especially n n edited clips of videos. Well, Especially when it didn't show anything yeah, but, other than people standing there. Yeah, but the, yeah. The, the, the thing is, is that it's getting to the point where you have to think that with literally every story that's on the news. Yeah. Because I only saw this, I was watching the morning news on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, wow, there's a punk kid acting like a punk kid at, at a school field trip. What I for, think if what, everyone what would, would have seen, yes, right. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Barbin. Yeah. Everyone who would have seen uh, the first clip, that's what they would have. Here's what actually happened. I didn't okay? even see the clip. I so didn't show the picture. What actually happened? Let me kind of go point by point for for people who haven't really been following. Uh, point one: the Native American. Elder actually was the one who initiated the confrontation, not the high school kids. Yeah. The kids yeah. were already there waiting for a bus doing a school chant. One activist group, uh, the Black Israelites, you know, I've had my run-ins with them. Can't go to heaven, by the way, <laughs> because, were... because there's not enough melanin in my skin. That's what they told me. They were already taunting the wow. kids. Okay, no, Then there was a second out. group led by Nathan Phillips, Native American uh, guy. He approached them, got in their faces with the drums, and that's what brings you to what you're seeing here. See how much they respect you, Israel? That's right. Here comes Gad. Here comes Gad. There he is coming in. Here comes Gad. Yeah, a little confusing. Because usually when someone look, says, Here comes Gad, it's th that's that signals peaceful intent. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, and it, it's not like they uh, they accosted the students or anything. But if somebody walked up to you at at this location beating a drum and then got like in your face, what what reaction would you? I would have? just think they were high. By the way, it's hit the <laughs> notification bell, join Mug Clip so you can see the Daily Show or subscribe on iTunes for those who yeah. uh, uh, listen to Thursday Show because uh, for some reason iTunes sometimes they send tender berries. Okay, here's what we we're gonna say. Brian, I, I was just gonna say I I always think of the Colin Quinn joke how the Black Israelites are the longest running show on Broadway. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, oh next point for people go go, go watch the it's it's funny when Colin. Quinn tells it. Yes. Uh, point number two, that here, despite the initial <laughs> coverage, uh, the MAGA hat kids, they actually, ne they never chanted build the wall. No. This is really you important. Didn't that at all. So Nathan Phillips, he claimed that the students taunted him and the media ran with this with, quote, build the wall. Well, don't take my word for it. I heard, I heard them saying, build that wall, build that wall. You know, this is indigenous lands. First off, I cannot verify that that's true. I assume it's incorrect. Second, two hours of raw video has been released. At no point do the kids chant anything about the wall. We can't show you the full two hours here. You can see this a little. There have been tons and tons of videos. Uh, you can go look it up. Make America great. You can go look it up and watch for yourself. Yes, we will. And of course, as more evidence emerged, by the way, it became increasingly clear that the Native Americans were just looking for a bar fight. We know that now. Oh, it seems a little oh, clear. Shit. By the way, <laughs> Maybe Nathan Phillips, something else that nobody covers, Nathan Phillips not just some random Native American elder. He's a far-left activist who has a long-standing history of instigating yeah. confrontation and then claiming racial harassment. 
And I, by the way, okay, I know I'm about to voice a very unpopular opinion it's here okay. because no one dared say this, but I'm everyone, and I mean everyone, has been acting as though this man is a wise sage and we should all admire him? <laughs> we always took care of our elders. We took care of our children. We always provided for them. You know, what? We taught what? them right you now. Did? I mean, it, it's, it's, is, is it me? Because I, if the kids in the MAGA hats come across as douchey, granted, they come across as douchey, but we're all supposed to act like this guy isn't a toothless far-left activist instigator seemingly in an opium vision quest? I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, you have to light it from the bottom and oh use a gosh. torch lighter. None of that bick, said my aunt. R really? You take care of your own? You take care of your own Nathan Phillips? That's the that's way, that's a typical oh. Native American. Yeah, exactly. yes. It's like Mr. Miyagi, who's traditional, also yeah. traditionally named Patrick. Uh, <laughs> High Chief Pete <laughs> Jones. Yes. You take care of, is that why we see rampant unemployment and drug addiction in Native American communities? Is that why Native American high schoolers have two to possibly three times more opioid abuse than the rest of the population? They're not faring so well. No. We, we used to take care of our elders. Have you been to a Native American reservation recently? Does it seem like they're thriving? Like it's the neighborhood that you want to visit to go look at Christmas lights. Not exactly, I would say. Yes, Gerald. <laughs> it's the train wreck of socialism in progress right now. We get to look at it and go, what would socialism be like if we provided for everybody anything that they wanted? What would that look like? Look at the Native American reservations. We Horrible. We take care of our elders. Oh, so you, you, don't, you don't need you the money anymore. No, 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 no. <laughs> we want the dough. <laughs> don't get us wrong. We still want you to make it rain and huff Windex. Here's the, the story is reopened. The some, I can tell you guys don't want to go along with me on this. You guys are cowards. It's reopened some old wounds, meaning uh, there are valuable lessons, I think, to be learned here. So, and by the way, frankly, these are lessons that should have been learned a long time ago. Oh, yeah. So let's go. Yeah. Lesson number one, sleep on it. Just wait. The benefit, okay, let's kind of weigh the pros and cons yeah. here. The, the risk-reward ratio, the benefit of jumping on something immediately is that maybe, just maybe, you break the story slightly earlier than the Occupy Wall Street Facebook page. <laughs> But that's not worth having egg on your face when it turns out to be false, or even worse, finding out, by the way, that you wrongfully smeared someone, a real person's actual reputation, which is what we run into all the time. Yeah, I, I, this is especially true whenever there's a brand new, like, anti-Trump blockbuster. Oh, yeah. Right. Every Always give it 48 yeah. to 72 hours. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And Never holds up. And you're purposefully, it seems like they're purposefully ruining people's reputations. You know, like in journalism, you're supposed to wait until you have some confirmation before you break a story, even right. if it's a huge breaking story that you want to get out there. And people are basically doing it for a few more likes or a few more shares or, or a few more like you know, well, things I on think, Facebook. I, I think there's more to it like, than that, which we'll, we'll kind of get to in a, a second after the lesson. But I think you're right. Lesson number two, I think it's really important, by the way. Unlike the left who defend their own at all costs, conservatives, a little too quick to cannibalize. Don't jump at that. And I get it. We often criticize the left for refusing to call out their own. And I yeah. think rightfully so. Of course. Uh, especially when they pile around with pro-Hitler anti-Semites like Farrakhan. Um, <laughs> but too far in the other direction, conservatives are not only willing to call out their own, it seems they're overly eager to cannibalize yeah. their own just to prove yeah. a point. Don't do that. Don't sacrifice someone else's reputation just because of your desire to appear like a reasonable conservative trademark, as I see it on Twitter. Because <laughs> here's something else. Someone can be a dick, and they can also be right. For reference, see our president. Yeah. And, and the left's <laughs> attacks are working because they're making us feel so bad about holding the viewpoints that we have that when somebody in our camp does something seemingly inappropriate, we're right. like, oh, gosh, we have to. Like, their attacks are working. They've done it so many times. Right. It makes us come out against our own people when they didn't even do anything wrong. Well, it's like this term compassionate. I'm a compassionate conservative. Like, well, well, hold on. What a second. What do you What do you mean? You mean that all of the other conservatives who believe in equality for all and freedom of opportunity and freedom across the board, they're not compassionate? What do you mean? Mm, I support model cities. Oh, shut <laughs> up! Come on! <laughs> and the other thing is, for all the uh, com criticizing that, the, that we do towards liberals about how quickly they have to go to outrage, we go from zero to, oh my God, I'm offended, falling back on my fainting couch, really quick. I wouldn't say we, I would say oh, there are we, some okay. conservatives. Uh, yeah, some, some, we, some Have conservatives. you watched this show? Yes, okay. <laughs> Have you been <laughs> present? The longest hire did on you this just, show. Did yes. you open the Cosby pills in your bourbon? <laughs> <laughs> no. Lesson three. I don't three. know what to do here. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this is something important to remember. You got your headphones going? We're yes. at war. Yeah. yeah. This is a lesson, by the way, that Andrew Breitbart tried to teach us. The media tries to paint this. And I saw, I saw, I was watching, unfortunately, CNN on Sunday. I do it almost every Sunday because. Oh, why? 
I do it so that you don't have Thank to. You. you should be thanking me. I just But did. they try to say, you know, Trump tries to paint this as though it's Trump versus the media. When it really is. Really, and that's exactly what it is. And it's, yeah. well, it's not only the media versus Trump. It's the media versus anyone on the right. And by the way, it's always been this way. Yeah. The yeah. idea that it started with Trump. This whole debacle, it's very similar to when, um, was it Congressman Clyburn? Yeah. Was it, I think it was Cly think so, Clyburn yeah. who claimed the Tea Party protesters called John Lewis oh, the yeah. N-word. By the uh, way, the media, they played the clip, they ran the headline, and you you assumed you heard, I even I remember this, I assumed that I heard it the first time yeah. it ran because they showed the congressman walking up the steps and they and then the, the Chiron says, called the N-word. And right. so what does it do? It tricks you where you go, oh, well, of course, they must they're showing it. the clip. He got mad. They wouldn't just silence the audio and say he was called <laughs> the N-word. They could never do that. But it never happened. No one ever said the N-word, just like none of these kids, none of them, ever chanted, build the wall. Andrew Breitbart, by the way, offered to donate $100,000 to the Negro College Fund for evidence that anyone said the N-word. And here's what's important about that. You can go back and watch the people who are kind of new, you know, you came in with the alt-right, kind of this new troll conservative. I get it. I'm glad that you guys are on board and you're developing. But a lot of you aren't familiar with what happened with Andrew Breitbart. They dragged his name through the mud over oh, this. Yeah. He offered $100,000 yeah. yeah. yep. to the College Fund for anyone who had any evidence saying the N-word. Okay? Here's what matters. There was more footage than you could watch in a lifetime of <laughs> yeah. the walk up the steps from yeah. every single angle. Michael Bay couldn't have this many cameramen <laughs> on the payroll. All right? <laughs> and it showed the opposite. Yeah. No evidence of the N-word, which some could say is evidence of the opposite. Yeah. Because, well, one thing I remember from that time is that was also when Democrats first started, well, if you were a Jewish Democrat, you happen to get a fact from someone who had a, said a Jewish slur. Right. And if you were a Hispanic Democrat, you happen to get a fact from someone who had a Hispanic slur. And then when Eric Cantor pointed out, it's like, oh, by the way, I'm a Republican and I've got, I have Democrats and people who are against me sending Jewish slurs towards me. All of a sudden the media didn't care. Right. Yeah. And when the Republicans like, ah, oh, I got an envelope with white powder in it. <sighs> <laughs> there must be some more powder cocaine for you. Look, the, the retractions that happen after this, too, don't don't make any difference whatsoever, right? Once you say it and you put it out there, everybody's like, oh, of course, they were yelling the N-word at people. It doesn't matter. I mean, Breitbart did something very laudable. But ultimately, how many people on the left said, oh, maybe they're right? Well, at that point, he, his platform wasn't big enough to really combat no. the media. That was the issue right. that he was running up against. Exactly. That's why uh, we're so grateful for people who joined Mug Club, and we're grateful that we're able to be surpassing the big leftist channels here Boom. on YouTube. But if you look at this with the, the, the MAGA hat kids, I guess is the story how it's being yeah. told. Are we supposed to believe that CNN um, didn't have the ability to find the full footage? <laughs> this is Honestly, because we did... To We're do the basic research, the same media who tells us, by the way, they tell us that they're real journalists, and they go, well, it's we hate Donald Trump's attack on the press because true journalism, not some bloggers out there with fake news, we <laughs> matter, and we're the backbone of the American, or of the American traditional institutions of truth. Really? So mm -hmm. we're supposed to believe here that you, so there are only two options here, okay? Option number one, either CNN and the rest of the media are grossly incompetent. They didn't have access to the clips or couldn't be bothered to do basic research. By the way, the kind of like basic right. research that we do on this, a comedy show, <laughs> or number two, they acted out of malice. They acted in malice in that they had access to the full footage and they ran the story as you saw it anyway. Probably number two based on the fact that CNN was still pushing the story the morning after it had already been debunked. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I would really go with number, a th third option there, both. I think they're both incompetent yeah, and they likely. have malicious intent. They have a worldview and they're looking to push that worldview, period, no matter what evidence right. comes against them at all. Yeah, I, I think this is also the result of when you get kids going to the Columbia School of Journalism uh, looking to be the next Samantha Bee. <laughs> because <laughs> I don't no, know that that's a thing, a but I'll go. Well, no, I'll go. Yeah, not a real joke. I was going to say John Stewart, but I'm actually a fan of his comedy. But um, yeah, no. But the thing is, is that they're they're attacking these stories not from looking for a, p a place of truth. They're attacking right. it from a place of we hate Donald Trump. Right. So the normal vetting that would go in, into like checking to see if these were accurate, like like like. Saying I don't think it's exclusive to Donald Trump. Though. I mean, like, remember Dan Rather? It's worth yeah. and, and the forging with the documents with Bush. It's all, yeah, it's always yeah. been like this for the right. I think it's definitely been worse for Donald Trump. With yes. the, they're not even pretending to. Well, well, because because he's not going silently into yeah. the night because yeah. Donald yes. Trump is calling them out exactly. for it. And I don't think and and I know you were not a big fan of uh, President Trump, and I certainly wasn't in the primaries. But I will say this: at this moment in time, I don't think that any other candidate, had they become president, would uh, have showcased, have highlighted the media for their dishonesty no. like he does. I think he's a very he's a light. Well, and respect. they blame yeah. Donald Trump for the division. He is a result of the division that they created, right. Right? at least in part, right? They're part of it created Donald Trump. If they're pissed yeah. at anybody for Donald Trump being president, they need only look at themselves. Right. 
Yeah. You do this enough with the, the MAGA kid and the Native American story, and you say, yeah. look at this, and then what you end up with, you say, what do you think about Alexandria uh, Cortez? And Donald Trump says, who cares? That's what happens. Yeah. You end up with, who cares? <laughs> Screw you. Love yeah, but you said the MAGA kid attacked the old uh, the old red skid, so I don't care what you have to say. <laughs> That's what happens. And by the way, yes, we should be reasonable. Of okay. Course. We shouldn't have a herd mentality of disagreeing with our opponents just for the sake of disagreement. But compromising right. just for compromising sake is just as shameful. You don't become, this is what Bob bothers me when you see the conservatives cannibalizing themselves. You don't all of a sudden become reasonable by randomly agreeing with the left every no. once in a while. By like, well, I'll throw them a bone because the kid had a douchey hat. That's what happened here. <laughs> Many on the right forgot that the media is waging a war against us. They wanted to appear reasonable. They wanted to appear even-handed as opposed to looking for truth. So they sided against these high school kids who did nothing but really stand and smile. Honestly, I, I get it. I get it. Privileged white kids, we're all supposed to hate them. Wearing a MAGA hat and he has a shit-eating grin, so we're supposed to... I understand that, but the truth is, this really isn't all that different from any kind of a civil rights protest where they say, don't be violent, just stand and smile. If you were, if, yeah. if the Native American were holding a rifle and he were putting a, a, a daisy in there, it would be an iconic <laughs> picture. <laughs> well, I mean, not for him, because he's white. Right, no, exactly. And he just <laughs> yeah, get run over yeah, with a tank. By the way, this, of course, opened the floodgates to countless articles, people who don't want to talk about this. The conservatives who virtue signaled and said, oh, I yeah. can't believe these kids, they should be ashamed of themselves. It opened the floodgates to countless articles about the school being LGB, uh, being against LGBTQAIP. Yeah. I was just reading in a Huffington Post this morning how they need to be shut down, and by proxy, the Pences being evil supervillains. Mm -hmm. You get the point. Mm -hmm. So remember the lessons here. If you see a controversial news story, okay, sleep on it. Be skeptical and don't crucify one of your own in a panic over the media, especially not publicly. That's no. what's really yeah. important. Wait for the evidence and remember when it comes to truth, when it comes to the access to information right now, don't forget, we are absolutely in a war. We are at war. Remember that. We have AJ Styles coming up after the break. Ooh. Hey there, YouTube viewer. If you like this video, I would say subscribe, hit the notification bell, or watch one of these videos playing in a box that we've personally uploaded and programmed for your viewing pleasure. The problem is now, in today's day and age on YouTube in 2018, any of those three things that you do, any of those three buttons that you click will take you directly to a Seth Meyers video. So stay here and join Mug... Get off of here. Go to loudwithcutter.com slash mugclub. It's the only safe place you can go and join.